Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and we're back at it again with another episode, the very first episode of 2021. Happy New Year! Happy New Year, Gorilla. I already know it's a Mego episode, isn't it? Well, what else could it be? Because you know what 2021 is. The end of the world? No, probably not, hopefully. Anyway, it's the 50 year anniversary of Action Jackson. No, it's not, Gorilla. That movie came out in 1988, and last year may have seemed like it was a couple decades long, but it has not been 50 years since then. You're right, Jess. 1988 wasn't 50 years ago, but I'm not talking about the Carl Weathers movie, Action Jackson. Then what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about the original 8-inch clothed figure, Action Jackson, from 1971. But what about G.I. Joe? Ha 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 ha! It's me, your old pal, Migo Marty, and you can shut your fat trap down, classic. Fat trap? I am the father of the action figure, the father of clothed figures, the father of toys! Ha 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 ha! Now wait just a minute! Silence! Marty has spoken! I have sat back too long and allowed you to besmirch my name! So now I'm here to set the record straight! So you're just gonna disregard the fact that G.I. Joe predates the Mego figure! Silence! The real American hero line from the 1980s does not predate the greatest toy line in the history of the universe! Mego's completely original 8-inch clothed figure! I'm not talking about the real American hero line! I'm talking about the 12-inch figure line from 1964! I have no recollection of that. Migo's 8-inch figure line was based on America's number one first fighting man, the real first action figure, the Fighting Yank. Ah, come the fuck on, even I know that's not true. Silence, butt-chinned army man. Army? Listen here, dollmonger. You're messing with a former Navy SEAL. Shut the fuck up! It's a new year, a new episode, and the same dirty old dolls. The Dan Classic Show is back, and this week we're going back to the beginning. It's the Fighting Yank by Migo! Raz Holly, hit the music! The 1960s, an era that saw the beginning of the Vietnam conflict, man's first voyages into space, and a cultural revolution that affected music, TV, movies, and pretty much every form of media whose effects can still be felt to this day. What the fuck does that have to do with toys? Well, in 1963, Stan Weston introduced an idea to Hasbro that would create its own revolution in toy production. That revolution is the action figure. Specifically, G.I. Joe. See, in the 1960s, Hasbro didn't think boys would want dolls. They also knew that boys' parents weren't going to buy dolls for their boys. So in a stroke of simplistic genius, they made dolls for boys and didn't call them dolls. Thus inventing, you guessed it, action figures. 12-inch or 1 6 scale figures with real clothing and accessories that can be swapped out just like the already successful Barbie line, swap fashion for military, add some more points of articulation, and you have G.I. Joe, America's movable fighting man. Weren't we supposed to be talking about Mego? Keep your pants on, Jess, I'm getting to it. Anyway, G.I. Joe was a huge hit, but by the end of the decade, sales slowed due to changes in public perception of the military. So instead of giving up, Hasbro pivoted introducing the G.I. Joe Adventure Team in 1970, expanding on ideas outside of military might. This also made way for concepts like Kung Fu Grip, Flocked Hair, and other action features we still see to this day. Meanwhile, in New York, Marty Abrams had just been named president of Mego, which at the time was a small company importing rack toys from China. Now, stories differ here, 
But allegedly, the Hong Kong office of Mego went into business for itself, knocking off the tooling for the popular G.I. Joe figure to create Mego's first product, the Fighting Yank. Oh, it's true! We had no idea that the Hong Kong factory had went ahead with plans to create a knockoff figure, going as far to design packaging, an ad campaign, and distributing the figure to stores all over the U.S. How could we have known? Popular toys get knocked off all the time, and there's generally not a lot toy companies can do about it. In this case, Hasbro had either intentionally or unintentionally installed a sort of fail-safe into the G.I. Joe figure. The hand was molded with a backwards thumb. Most people didn't notice it, including Mego, who produced their fighting yank with the same backwards thumb, enabling Hasbro to pursue damages. They ended up settling out of court. Mego changed their fighting yank, but eventually ceased production. But the idea was still good, and Mego would go on to tweak it into what would become one of the most successful and beloved toy lines of all time. G.I. Joe Adventure Team would peter out by the late 70s and wouldn't really be seen until the big Real American Hero reboot that kept G.I. Joe in the game for another two decades. But we're not talking about G.I. Joe, we're talking about the Fighting Yank. The Fighting Yank figures still pop up from time to time online. I recently scored one for a great price, so let's check out the Fighting Yank. All right, so here we have right here in my photo booth the 12 inch action figure Fighting Yank by Mego from 1970. So they were making these a little bit uh, beforehand, um, I think in the 60s. Um, this is the version of the of the Fighting Yank that comes later on um, that was uh, after all of the controversy with the thumb um, they remade the Fighting Yank and he looks completely different now he has a completely new head sculpt and uh, obviously new hand sculpt uh, so we're gonna take a look at uh, the Fighting Yank but let's take a look at his packaging first um, he has a nice little uh, red white and blue box very patriotic looking um, it's very cool um, it, it is reminiscent of what we're going to see later on with Action Jackson. Um, these may have been almost around, this may have been around the same time as Action Jackson. This is like a year before Action Jackson's 1971. This is from 1970. We've uh, got the, the cross cell on the back with the Navy dress uniform, Army Green Beret uniform, the skating patrol, snowbound, Air Force flight uniform, and West Point cadet. Um, and uh, we have some more here on the side we got a scuba man we got a we got a cop we got a, a fucking marine corps guy we got some sort of explorer fella um, and uh, you got your soldier your infantryman sort of thing you got a sailor um, what the fuck is this like a British fucking guy I don't know anyway um, so yeah that's the fighting yank box it's, it says fighting yank on the top and bottom um, it's got a little you know, cellophane fucking window on it. Inside, he, he should have his little hat, and it looks like he does. Um, so let's get this thing out of the box and see what he looks like on the inside. Okay, so here he is, the Fighting Yank out of the box, and he has his little dog tag, as you can see, and his little cap um, on, but that does not really fit him on his head. Um, and from head to toe, uh, you want to take a look at the hands here. These have been these are new sculpts. He doesn't have a uh, uh, an elbow. Is he a bendy? Oh, look at this. He's kind of a bendy. Kind of. Um, maybe they put like a little wire on the inside. Um, we'll take a look here. Um, he's got some plastic boots that don't fit him very well. He's got like a T crotch. It looks like. Yeah, it's like a T crotch. Um, and this fucking hat. Look at this shit. Like it fucking doesn't even fit. They couldn't sculpt a new fucking hat. And then look at this. Look at his fucking head just fucking pops right off. His stupid fucking body and his dumb, like, it's like a medallion. That's not a dog tag. It's like, look, it's so big. It's so big. And, he, and this is new. This is like out of the box. His fucking head falls right off. Oh my god. Um, yeah, I wish I had an, an original Fighting Yank or a fucking G.I. Joe to show you to compare it. Because um, this is so much... Fuck, oh, look at this. 
Yeah, I mean, like, you know, this is, uh, yeah, typical fucking regulation cut, right? Fucking, like, sideburns way down his cheeks. <laughs> so fucking bad. And, like, the paint job, it's, like, not even done like he's fucking balding. Um, but I have one that's already loose, so let's take a look at him and we'll see what he's made of. All right, so here's here's uh, my other fighting gank uh, for comparison. Um, he looks a little faded next to our our uh, the fighting gank that we've been looking at. Oh my god, he's not much better though. I'll tell you that much. Um, yeah, they got the same boots and whatever on. Um, his shirt seems to be a bit more green than his his shirt. It's showing up kind of weird in the viewfinder here. Um, uh, this is this one's a little bit more of a dark brown. This one is is kind of an olive uh, olive slash brown, closer to the fucking uh, the color of the pants. Um, the BDUs he's got on here, um, as they would call them. But I'm gonna take clothes off here, and we'll see what he fucking looks like underneath. Well, this one's fucking head won't come off at all. <laughs> Motherfucker. There. There, I've broken it. Um, there, there you go. Fucking. <laughs> there, there's, your, there's your original quality right there. Oh, my God. Um, so, yeah, so if we take a look... At, put dumb shitty head back on um, if we look at him try to hold him back far and keep keep him in the viewfinder here um, so from head to toe he's um, he does not look like a Mego figure he doesn't have the elastic uh, inside the body or anything like that it's not really um, it's like a cheap shit version I think they just took some other doll body uh, they've got the, the Mego Made in Hong Kong, um, right back there, 1970. I think that's what it says. At least I don't know. What am I? I'm not my fucking Roman. What am I? Goddamn, fucking Caesar. I can't. I can't fucking read this shit. Anyway, uh, so yeah, it looks like his arms, um, as you can tell by the little fucking holes in there, these are bendy. He has bendy arms, a la Gumby, um, but they are on a. Uh, and they're, they're posted into the body. Um, let's see if we can pull that out there. Um, so yeah, um, they have these like typical little mushroom style things that pop into the, the torso. And they should pop right back in. I mean, I guess it's not the worst thing in the world. I imagine they weren't selling these things for as much as you would sell a G.I. Joe for. At least I fucking hope not. Um, because this thing is a, is, a, is a piece of shit. It really is a piece of shit. They just took the clothes off of the, the, the original Fighting Yank, which was just a knockoff G.I. Joe, and, uh, and, and slapped it onto this, this new sculpt, which is... It's, look at your face. It's fucking terrible. It's fucking awful! Jesus Christ! I mean, like, they can't even paint the whole fucking thing! Oh my god! So, uh, for all the people that, that was like, Migo, Migo used to be you know, such a high quality company, Migo was a. M Migo was, was so much better in the 1970s. Well, here is 1970 fucking Migo figure, right here. It's 50. Fucking plus years old, 51 years old this year. What a piece of fucking garbage this is. And god damn it, I'm glad that I didn't grow up back then to, to have had one of these fucking shitty things. And uh, yeah, no wonder. No wonder this thing's been lost to fucking history and nobody fucking remembers it. It's a piece of shit. Well, that's all for the Fighting Yank. What did you think of this figure? Did you have one in the 1970s? Let us know in the comments down below! What did any of this have to do with Action Jackson? Holy shit, I totally forgot about Action Jackson! That's what we were supposed to be doing today! Well, it's too late now! Well, we've got all year to get around to it, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing! Yeah, that would be a shame! Will you be serious? Anyway, that's all for this week! We'll see you next time on the Dan Classic Show! Happy New Year, everybody! Raz Holly, hit the music!
shut up, Duke. 